everyone, John here with another Monster Hunter video. So originally this video was going to be about me giving 5 tips to new players of Monster Hunter World. Halfway through the video I realized that I can give a lot more than 5 tips, so instead of just putting a number to it, I'm just gonna start making uh, this video where I just gave off as many tips as I can think of at the top of my head. Uh, these are tips that range from early game to maybe mid-range, uh, mid-game of the game, of my- uh, These tips might range from early game to mid game in Monster the World. So it's good for new people. So starting off, choosing your weapon early in the game. Uh, if you're new to Monster the World, I highly recommend using lighter, faster weapons just because you haven't uh, gotten used to the monsters in the game quite yet, especially if you just literally just started. So uh, in other games, the sword and shield wouldn't be the very best weapon, in at least my opinion. But now, after all the mechanics you've put into this th damn thing, it is fantastic. The sword and shield is an amazing, noob-friendly weapon that I highly recommend anyone to use when you're starting out the game. It's very good. It's very. It's even just really fun. I'm actually using it right now, uh, in my uh, my newest hunts I've been doing. I've been trying to use it to kill some tempered monsters. It's pretty hard to use against tempered monsters, to be honest. But it's it's really good. It can be used with items, so if you're running around and you quickly select the uh, item with your uh, select selection wheel, uh, you can use it right there and there. Even if you have your weapon out, it's fine, it's great, It's it doesn't get uh, put away, you can still keep fighting. Uh, so you can shoot a flash bomb out while you have your sword out, and it's really useful, and it's great for early game players. Uh, another, another thing you should be doing with the weapons so you get to use them instead of uh, going out there and dying. I mean, you could go out there and die if you want, or you could just go into the training room and practice, learn the combos. The com uh, the basic combos are also in your hunter's manual, so you can just open up your little manual and check the basic combos. It doesn't give you too much, really. It doesn't give you all, all the greatest uh, attacks, but it gives you something to start off with. And just start spamming the button. See what you see what kind of combos you guys can get out. Uh, see which one does the highest numbers. See which ones you can roll out of just so you can get out of certain situations where you're stuck in the middle of a fight. Uh, another great tip is while you're out there in the in the game, you can gather things really, really quickly now. So when you're going by anything you can pick up, just pick it up. Pick up everything. I also highly recommend you guys look for honey, herbs, and bitter bugs. Honey and bitter bugs make catalysts, which can be used to help make demon drugs, armor skin, and to a later, later extent, Mega Demon Drug and Mega Armor Skin, and those are very useful items for end game and mid game. So farm as much as you can now, and gather up as much as you can right now when you're starting out the game. Herbs are used to make potions, which you need to stay alive. And you can mix potions with honey to make Mega Potions. So yeah, stack up now, gather as much stuff as you can now. Also, when you're just out there, pick up everything. Like literally, everything. Don't get shy. Because uh, if you decide to switch over to guns, you can pick up stuff that makes bullets. So, sh bug shells, uh, fire herbs, make coatings for arrows, stuff like that. You just gather as much as you can out there. Go If you have like an hour before you go to work, for example, just take that hour and just farm. Just farm for materials and gather as much as you can. Empty out your inventory, just gather as much as you can. But another good way to actually get more material another good way to get materials is to use this giant farm tree thing you get in the game at some point in the story you can unlock it so just go to the store and eventually someone's gonna talk to you they'll have this commission put over their heads and they'll tell you that the farm is unlocked it's a giant tree you just need to uh give them material for it or do an optional quest and you can even upgrade it further to get even more stuff to farm for and it's very very useful you can just farm honey farm herbs farm bitter bugs farm whatever you want uh, you can also get mite seeds, armor seeds, which are used to make armor skins and demon drugs. So keep that in mind. This is really useful as hell. Always eat before you go out on a hunt. Uh, and don't just always use the chef's choice. Make a custom platter because uh, these skills can be very useful. You can sharpen faster. You can get out of uh, um, roars. Sometimes you get earplugs. Uh, they also help you with debuffs sometimes uh, depending on the skill you want. It's really great to make custom platters just because you can start to understand what skills are you can see what skills stack better you can mess around with them your cat also gets buffs from them too so that's really useful your early game armor sucks so your default armor is bad replace it with literally anything just get rid of it get different skills on different armors uh, I highly recommend getting the pookie pookie armor and then the adjunct armor if you can get it 
because early game it's really useful. Engine F is re very, very good for uh, gunners or bow users, or even a gun lance user, because you can use wire and fire with the uh, one of the abilities it has on. It's really useful. After that, I would get the Raytheon armor and then the Raphalos armor if you can get your hands on it. If it's too hard, I would just stick with Raytheon for a little bit. Have your friends help you with the Raphalos later on. Research monsters as much as possible. Uh, the way you can research monsters is by uh, killing them or capturing them or just fighting them in general. But it's a good idea to capture as many as possible because you get more research for them and you can get better drops, you can get better rewards. You can also eventually see what their uh, weaknesses on their body, the, what, what ailments work better on them, so like poison, paralyze, blast, impact damage in their heads, stuff like that. Also, level up your scout flies as much as possible. Scout flies can be leveled up by picking up a bunch of footprints. Uh, just walk over the footprints, push circle, pick it up, there you go. It's, it's really not that complicated. P uh, get as many footprints as possible, and your scout flies will eventually be able to tell you if the monster is dying and is able to be captured with a little skull over its head in the map. Or, it can also tell you where the monster is going which is also extremely useful if you lost it, you don't know where it's going, you just open your map and check it out. There it is, it tells you where, where it's going. Get equipment and weapons and abilities for your Palico. Your Palico is your best friend and he will be there helping you the entire time of the game. So, on every map there is these little signs that look like cats. Follow them, gather them up with your uh, scufflies and it will lead you to the leaders of that area for the cats. And they will teach your Palico, no, no, they'll give your Palico a mission, you and your Palico a mission. And you have to go do it. Once you do do it, you will get a new ability for Palico. It ranges from flash bombs, healing bugs, uh, a little face shield thing that can get the monster attention off of you, a drum that buffs you, which is my personal favorite, a blade that makes it so the monster drops more items, and a ballista that shoots bombs at the monster, which is just amazing. And I highly recommend you guys get that. It's so much fun to use that one. Uh, this one's pretty simple, uh, but a lot of people don't seem to do it. I've fucked up on this before, too. Make sure your inventory is all set f before you go on a hunt. So make sure you have 10 potions, 10 mega potions. Make sure you have your armor skins. Make sure you have your mega demon drugs or demon drugs, whatever you want. Make sure you have your flash bombs. Make sure you have your antidote if the monster has poison. Make sure your inventory is all good and set if you're going to go on a serious hunt. So you don't mess up halfway through. I've done it multiple times where I'll have, like, a bunch of shit in my inventory. And then it fucks me over later on. I've done it so many times. Just watch my videos sometimes and I'll have like too many things in my inventory and it just ruins the hunt at the beginning. So I have to go like back to camp, go in my tent and just deposit all that stuff and then go back in and find the monster. It's a pain in the butt. Happens to the best of us, but make sure your inventory is all set and pretty. Make sure it's nice and ready and stuff. Another fun fact, once you capture a monster, you can actually see them sleeping in Astera right in this little spot right here. Once their body disappears, you can actually go into the arena and fight them again. Except this time you have ballistas, you have rocks, you can have a dragonator stab into them. And it's a lot easier, so you can just farm their corpses after they're dead. It's kind of fucked up. You also have cannons. Fucking cannons for these little guys. <laughs> it's kind of messed up, because some, some monsters are just small and weak, and you can just go in there and just deck them again with like a bunch of shit. It's, it's, it's fucked up. <laughs> I, do, I do think that monsters have some weird morals, but it's... They're there! You can you can take their resources after you kill them. I, I mean, after you capture them. And then kill them. In the arena. Another good tip is to search every single map for the campsites. Each map has a different amount of campsites. For example, Agent Forest has four. Wildspire Waste has four as well. The Rotten Vale only has two. Coral Reef has two. And the Elder Recess has three. So these campsites are very, very useful. I highly recommend you find all of them. Because once you do, you can essentially fast travel in between all of them so if a monster flies away it's going near another campsite you can just land there and move towards the monster it's really great and I always use that ability and I spam uh, fast traveling when I always need to so it's a good idea to have and finally do not be afraid to make mix sets mix sets are actually really cool because now in monster the world you can actually unlock certain abilities by having only three or two certain pieces on. For example, the Rathless Mastery for my higher rank Rathless Armor only needs two pieces to activate the special ability. So you can mix the rest of the armor sets with whatever you want. So depending on your weapon, if you have a katana, you want more affinity, you can just put on a Autogoron chest piece, arms or legs or whatever, and it will give you more stats for that ability that you want up. 
and you can do this early game, late game, mid game, it doesn't matter. You can do it whenever you want, so don't be afraid to mix things up. Just if you, if you look goofy, who cares, as long as your skills benefit your weapon and you as a fighter. And that's my video. Sorry it took me so long today to get this video up. I kept changing things around and things kept getting in the way. And my parents are upstairs yelling their asses off for some fucking reason. So it's getting really hard to record today. So sorry about that. But if you enjoyed this video and found any tips useful, please let me know in the comments down below or like this video. And if you want to see more from our channel, subscribe to our training game for more. And please follow us on Twitter to get notified because YouTube's notifications are shit. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you guys in the next video. Bye!